sure if that was the right choice, attacking the statue instead of attacking the zombies. It looked like the zombies might have died when I did it, though, so I might have gotten really lucky there. The host have mercy. What a foul beast. Okay. It looks like it did kill the zombies at least, but now we have this thing. Ascended Archon, Vampire Crimson Covenant, very dangerous, hostile, all sorts of new abilities now. This monster is only capable of feeling two things, pain and animalistic fury. Filled by the stone shard lodged deep inside it. Oh, so he has the stone shard? I missed that part completely. Okay. Bestial charge. Charges forward in a five tile line. The first target in this path takes plus 666% damage. If it collides with scenery during the charge, he is stunned for two turns. So that's that's gonna be the trick, right? Is we have to somehow figure out when he's gonna charge and then move. Swipe, normal attack. Jump away. Comes back two tiles or less, gaining dodge and taking less damage. Corpse devouring. Heals 33% max health. The next turn releases a swarm of spectral bats in an area dealing a bunch of damage. Okay. He didn't actually hit it though, I don't think. No, he didn't. Okay, now he will. Oh, and I got a crit for 31. Ow. Oh, crap. I'm gonna take that damage. Can't do anything about it, I have nowhere to move. Yikes, we were doing really good until that happened. Hit him for 22, hit him for 22. He just ate a corpse though and healed. Healed for 86. No, I didn't mean to move forward. He tried to jump back. Hit him for six. This is beast still I wasn't able to bait him into hitting anything though. Crap. That ability is so nasty. And it for 22. Eating another healthy heals for 28, or eating another corpse. We got him to stun himself. We hit him for 11. Hit him for 22. Knocked him back though. Okay, at least we were able to dodge that this time. Oh no. Oh, he did hit it. I didn't think he was going to. Item for 22, he missed. Item for 22, he hit me that time. I think I'm, I think I'm dead. Double cursed, I'm in pain. Yep, here it goes. I'm dead to that. Literally not saving me. Well, I got an extra. How far back? Welcome to Here There Be Monsters. I'm Mercy, and we're so glad you're back for another episode of Power Hour. Today, we started out right in the middle of things to resolve the cliffhanger from episode two. After we defeat the boss, we'll meet Varen's friends steal food from around town to survive, and make our way out into the wilderness. If you enjoy the video, we'd love to have you subscribe here on YouTube and follow us on socials. We stream every night on Twitch except Fridays, and every Tuesday, Thursday afternoon on Mixer. We'll put links for everything in the description down below. Thank you. Okay, it looks like we did not have to go back very far. 
We still haven't spent any of our skill points. We have five of them saved. This may be the point in the game where we have to spend those points. It may not be possible to beat the boss without doing so, but we're going to try again. The biggest thing that we learned last time is that we need to be angled so we can get him to charge into a corner. So that way he stuns himself. But we can't be too much in the corner or else we can't run from the flames that he summoned. Vatted! You out alive! Not while you can't! No! We can skip this this time. Not well. If you'd like to catch up on that dialogue, you can go back near the end of Power Hour Stone Shard Episode 2. Quick recap, he periodically summons these zombies and we have to destroy the statues. One of his other abilities also is to drop this blood on the ground. Um, and if we don't move the next turn, it explodes out doing a pretty significant amount of damage. Furthermore, it will deal damage to people in the area for a few turns thereafter. So like that zombie just took one. Stop me. We hit him for 13, he hit me back for 1 on a fumble. I hit him for 25, he hit me back for 6. And there we go. Now we need to get back to moving. Hopefully the next time he does blood here, it doesn't force us to turn the other direction again. Ooh, we crit for 31. It did, however, heal for 18, so that one does quite a bit of that damage. Hit him for 25, it hit me back for 6. Really, these zombies are here to act as attrition. Oh, we're bleeding. Did not realize that. We lost a little bit more health than we needed to there. Two health due to bleeding. Kill that one in two hits at least. We hit it for 25. He only hit me for three, and then we hit it for 25 again. Now it's time to break this other statue. There will probably be blood coming again. Now the real fun the begins. Host have mercy. What a foul beast. So a quick recap here. He's resistant to pretty much most magic types. He has a charge attack, which as is often the case with monsters of this type, if we can get him to charge into an object, he'll be stunned briefly. He has an AOE attack, a jump back. He can eat bodies to regain hit points. And I honestly don't remember, I guess the bats are just going to damage as well. So this is his charge coming in. So we want to move in such a way that we can take advantage of this charge. Like this, so he charges into the wall. Move one close. What? I guess he didn't run into the wall. That must have been the max range of the charge. Okay, this is what we need to not be in. And that's why I was saying we can't be caught in a corner. Thankfully, we're able to dodge it. Now that he's used that, we actually want to move back in such a way that he hopefully will charge into a corner again, or, in, you know, into a wall. Perfect. And we want to move towards where we will be able to hit him, which it looks like is going to be here. So we go like this. Oh, we hit the altar. Even better. We get two hits in now. This is going to be our first damage on the boss. We hit it for 25. And we hit it for 25. Uh, he hit me back for 11. So I guess now that we've been knocked back, we just want to run. Perfect. See, if we hadn't moved, we would have taken a ton of damage here next turn. 
Now, ideally, we want to try and bait him into charging where there are not corpses. Because he can eat the corpses to heal himself. So, I don't know if we're going to be able to pull this off. But, ideally, I want to try and move right back over here and get him to charge into this statue. But I suspect he'll... I think he'll move forward. I don't, I don't think I'm going to be able to... See, this is risky. Okay. So go down. Blood charge fast. He is going to eat a corpse here, probably. Ow. So he just undid... He healed for 46. How much damage have we actually done to him? We had done 50 prior to that. We've done 4 total damage. Oh, interesting. He jumped back from me. I don't think he's going to get stunned here, but he will run past us. Yeah, he did not get stunned. I had him for 25. He hit me back for 11. He's not next to me. Ooh. Okay, we dodged it. There we go. Now we get him to charge into this over here. Now he is going to end up near bodies again, which is unfortunate. We were hoping to avoid that, but... He did not get stunned. And for 25, he hit me back for 11 and healed for 1. A lot of Jason hit me. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted to bait him into. Get him to stun himself on the altar. Right next to us. Ooh, a crit for 31. And another crit for 31. Now, he hit me back for 12 after that, but that was a really good exchange for us. Now, I am in a bit of a corner, so I need to move like this. Because, yep, he's probably about to summon that stuff. Now, can we move back to get him to stun himself on the statue? No, we cannot. Can you move out of the way? What's this? I don't remember that being there. Okay, we got him to come back to us. He's not eating a corpse right now. Now we need him to charge. Oh, crap. Oh, no. Okay, actually, that's good. We fumbled and still hit him for 13, and then he jumped away from me, which means that he almost definitely is about to charge. Another crit for 31. Ugh, not good. We fumbled again. We hit him for 13, but he hit us back for 12. We cannot take trades like that. Pain is at 43%. Oh, no. Okay, good. That was not the direction I meant to move. I'm very happy that we didn't end up getting stuck in that. We don't kill him here. I'm I'm worried. Oh look at this! I just noticed when we get low health, there's like blood in my beard and stuff. Twenty-five. Come on, crit for the win. Oh no, we have higher. I didn't realize that. Why are we in pain? We just are in general. Do I have anything that deals with pain? Injury treatment, health restoration, thirst, intoxication, minus pain, plus morale. Makes you drunk. We don't know what drunk actually does though. Do we get drunk during this fight? Or we hit the ether inhaler. 40% intoxication. I think we have to. Right? We can't afford to take bonus damage. We probably already let that go off for too long. What's our pain at? 43? I 
I'm assuming Intoxication is going to give me back Fumble Chance, though, right? But it might reduce damage taken. Hmm. I think we have to go for it. Oh, what a time to get a crit. Varen, I have many questions. I'm sure you do, Rinward. Now is not the time. We have the stone shard. Let's get out of here. Uh, but we didn't actually take the stone shard back there? Okay. <laughs> it's like... God, it's an actual item that we have to take? I don't know. I don't know if pain goes away on its own. So I'm not going to use any substances or anything. Oh, wow. And we got fully healed. Oh, I guess because we leveled. Agility and perception seem to still be working out very well for me. I'm going to keep doing that. Wait, I have 10 ability points? I'm level 12? Holy crap. Okay, so let's get these to 20. And then I'll take a little bit of vitality. The ever popular question with this game, what in the world do we drop? Single bandage, but that's my only bandage right now. I don't think we can afford to drop that. Drop our cheapest book, 450. Hawkpicks seem to be super valuable. Antidote, I suspect, is going to be somewhat rare at least. Those are both very valuable. Water skin, I have to have. Surgeon's Toolkit, I think is going to be valuable. Yeah, I think we drop our cheapest book, which appears to be 450. What do you do? It still radiates heat. That's that's all we got. Assume <laughs> this door will be openable now. Excellent. All right, so we made it out of the monastery. We're still in pain. I think it has gone down, though. I, th I think we were 37%, right? Our buddies are over here. Surely they want us to come talk to them. There's lootables back there, an openable door. All right. Well, first things first, let's see, see what our buddies have to say. All my belongings, my entire fortune, I'm ruined. I like how, you know, being captured by the necromantic vampire zombie evil priest acolyte guy put in cages, life threatened. Immediately, he's worried about his riches. For the love of the whole strain word, shut your mouth. Baron is dead. Locke is dead. So is Jorgen. And you cry over some old junk. Daryl knows what's up. <laughs> And it's all because of you, Varen. Did you think our lads would chicken out? You could have at least told me. Oh, we knew. An easy job. Maybe some digging. You call a horde of cannibals an easy job. Are you out of your mind? Do you think I was lying to you? Gwenol swore that the monastery had been deserted for decades. Gwenol. So you're saying that your Gwenol set us up for certain death? Our Gwenol? I... I don't know. I hope not. It's some kind of mistake. Wait, I thought this guy was Gwenol. This mistake cost half our men their lives. I know. I have many questions, too. And believe me, once we are done with the contract, Gwenol will answer each and every one of them. No, Varen. This is where we part. 
The caravan is no more. Rinward, Aruz, and I are going back to Bryn. Oh. After all these years, I've just saved your hides. All you did was save us from the trap you let us into. We always used to know where and what our jobs were. But once you started rubbing elbows with Gwynell, there was no end to our misfortune. Oof. I want to know what Gwynell is hiding, why he needs stone shards, and what these damn stone shards are to begin with. Are we the baddies? And yet, we don't have the slightest idea about anything, while well, you only care about money. But there is no paying death off. I'm done. You are free to go. But I am bound by the contract. I'll manage without you. Get lost. Ooh. <laughs> cool guys don't look at explosions. Oh, I should have gone and looted the graveyard or whatever that was. We don't get reading for this one? That's weird. All right. Varen says, so here I am. The caravan is gone. My leg is crippled. Half my men are dead and the other half are deserters and traitors. The host be praised. At least I've still got the stone shard. Oh, we're not voice acted? That's a bummer. I really like the voice actor. Well, okay. I guess uh, we put our reading pants on, ladies and gentlemen. I know this game is still in beta development. I hope they continue to add more voiceover as it goes on. I really enjoyed the voice actor. I like how all the things that I can potentially steal or whatnot coming up here are all blinging out. Alright, Varen says, If I knew I had to deal with an entire cult of devil knows what. I'd think thrice before getting into the whole mess. I'm too old for an adventure like this. Arg. If only I could have a good talk with Quinnell right now. I'd ask him what the hell is going on. I've been doing this for 30 years, but I've never found myself in such a tough spot. I need to get back to Bryn. I'm not going there by myself. So that's why I sent for you. Do you remember how I helped you out back then? Well, time to return the favor. Damn, it's been so long. Tell me, what have you been up to? <laughs> Demands help, then is like, hey, how's it going? Oh, so we don't play as him. Or do we or is this a party management game? I assumed it was gonna be a single dude. For each enemy killed, receive 15% weapon damage and 20% crit efficiency for 10 turns. For each enemy within your vision, receive minus 5% cooldown duration and minus 5% abilities cost. That's pretty cool. First time an enemy enters your vision, they receive minus 10% dodge chance and plus 10% plus damage for 10 turns. That's cool. Each learned spell grants 2% magical power. I kind of like her. I think she could be really good later. And she's good with maces and shields. If this is a party game, I was thinking about getting somebody that had a blunt weapon in case damage types are a thing here. Beta character, not available in beta. Is that so? Interesting. Anyway, enough pleasantries. It's time to get to work. So here's the deal. I can't walk to Bryn with my leg like this. So unless you plan to carry me, we need a cart. We need horses. Word luck, though. While you were away, I had a talk with the village elder. We came to an agreement. We'll fulfill three contracts for them, and they'll give us a cart and two horses. Don't worry about the contracts. It's nothing special. I don't think you'll need my advice on how to deal with the undead and brigands. The elder will give you the details. You should go to him right away. No time to waste. Ah, I almost forgot. Here's a map of the area. You need it more than I do. You can also ask the innkeeper about local events. He is a talkative kind. I'm sure he'll answer any of your questions. Off you go then. Good luck. So all those stats and everything, I don't get to keep any of that. No wonder I was getting so much loot. I was wondering. I was like, how is it possible that I get to walk out of here with like... 10,000 crowns worth of cash loot. We have an heirloom that's busted up. 
worn cloak, crappy cowl, crappy shoes, crappy ring. Unless the people get mad at me for having my weapon out, I might as well have it out, right? First of all, let's talk to... Can I just take this? Apparently. Who is Gwynnel? I'm surprised you've never heard about him. A renowned alchemist. A former corrupt physician. You won't find a finer scholar to this side of the Aldorian Mountains. I hear King Edbert used to trust him more than his first advisor. What was he famous for? He invented an elixir, did wonders to one's health. Selling it made him a fortune. Then it turned out that this potion had side effects. Some were lucky to just die. Only his majesty's patronage saved Gwenel's life, but he had to abandon his post as a court physician. Since then, he's been trying to figure out what went wrong with the formula. Gwenel do next. This whole elixir business, it bruised his ego. After he moved to Bryn, he barely leaves his laboratory. A man of simple tastes, that part I like about him. He lives in a tiny hovel, no hints of luxury. Some village members live better than Gwynnel. But considering how much he pays for this contract, he still has money to spare. How do you know Gwynnel can be trusted? I don't have reason to think he can't be trusted. Oh, I don't know, except for the fact that he just led your party to massacre. Not the first time I work with him. How did you meet Gwynnel? Reputation. It's all about reputation. I'm not one of those mercs who wander the world clearing out crypts and killing ghouls for peasants. I'm a relic seeker. Pretty much the same thing, I think. Relics are a delicate matter. There isn't much use for brute force when searching for them, so I don't have many competitors. <laughs> I think I'll call him out on his BS, right? We've got a pretty cool lady knight here. No offense, that's how it is. There are more than enough bounty hunters. One gets killed, three more ready to pick up his contract. You can't say the same about me. If someone is looking for antique relics, sooner or later they find themselves on my front steps. Gwenel is no exception. What I want from you? Books. What else could an alchemist want? I had to dig up a huge pile of scrolls and treatises for one of his experiments. Swallowed more dust that day than my whole life. Though it's a pleasure to work with him. He is polite, knows what he wants, pays generously and without delay. It doesn't hold back with advances. Perhaps that's what I like about him the most. We've been working together ever since. About the stone shard. What is that thing exactly? Honestly, I don't have the slightest idea. That's Gwenel for you. He once tried to explain the gist of his theories, but it was no use. I'm no fool, but I couldn't understand half of his words. I decided not to ask meaningless questions. I figured he was just some eccentric alchemist searching for an ingredient for yet another philosopher's stone. Not like he could succeed. What's there to worry about? I'm sure there's absolutely nothing to worry about, Varen. No problem. Gwenel's totally not evil. It's fine. Now, of course, I regret it. I don't know what came over me that day. I should have listened, asked, thought it all through. How did you find the stone shard? By accident. At the time, I was looking for some alchemy scroll for Gwenel. He was eager to have a look at it as soon as possible, so he decided to tag along. I don't usually allow this, but the place was safe and Gwenel was pleasant to chat with, so I didn't object. The place was an antique Axonian archive. The room with the scroll in question was flooded with groundwater, but the scroll itself was intact. We were about to return to the surface when I noticed a collapsed passage. I have a sense for these things, you know. I had to swing a pickaxe for hours, knee-deep in ice-cold water. But it was all worth it. The passage led to another hall, littered with stone pedestals. The stone shard was placed on one of them. And what about Gwenel? Gwenel? You should have seen his face. He paid me ten times the sum we'd agreed on. Almost rode our horses to death on our way back. That's how much he wanted to return to town. A couple of weeks later, I woke up to the sound of someone banging on my doors if they were trying to break in. Turned out it was Gwenel. Happy to inform me that there is more than one stone shard, and the second one is hidden somewhere in the dungeons under the Abbey of the Holy Revelation. Ooh. Okay, the first kind of interesting choice here, because I'd imagine I'm not going to get to go back to the other one. Did we notice anything strange about the stone shard, or how did he know it was there? I think that's a better choice. How did he know it was there? He has an impressive library. After our discovery, he went through it and found a mention of some stone of the Holy Revelation. The stone was thought to be a miraculous relic, which had been kept for centuries in a monastery close to Manshire. Judging by the description, it did look like the one we found. 
After an outbreak of the Crimson Plague, the Abbey was abandoned, and the Stone of the Holy Revelation disappeared in the catacombs along with the monks. Since then, locals believe the monastery to be haunted, knowing full well to steer away from it. Well, for a good reason. Oh, I can ask him about it, okay. Mm. I think I'll take the first one. Did you notice anything strange about the stone shard? The stone shard seemed inert. I didn't feel any magic from it. In more than 30 years of hunting relics, I've held enough of them in my hands to learn a thing or two. Two thirds of them are junk. The only miraculous thing about them is how ridiculously high you can sell them for. The stone shard felt like one of those duds. Why do people want these relics then? Truth is a boring thing, and people like fancy tales. Sometimes a well-told legend can turn a chunk of rusty iron into a legendary weapon. But still, the stone shards. Yes, yes, I understand it myself now. After everything I saw in that monastery, if I can be sure of anything, is that it contains magic. But I didn't feel traces of it back then. Something, something doesn't seem right. But I'll get to the bottom of it. We will. And Gwenol told you that the monastery was empty, right? He did. I'm not the one to do anything without gathering information first, but I trusted Gwenel, so the preparations were on him. I'm not the only mercenary in his service. I thought he just said earlier that he wasn't a mercenary. Whoops! Can we scroll up? Okay. He has a bunch of other people working for him. Gathering rumors, searching for leads. My part is rather small. Find the thing and bring it to him. That time, as always, Gwenel relayed me their reports. It sounded like a job for a day or two, so I gathered my men and went straight to the Abbey. What happened next? You already know. So, you think his scouts are to blame? Certainly. Why would Gwenel lie to me? I can't say the same about his men, though. They might as well had done a sloppy job. Mercenaries nowadays are no match to the ones I used to know when I was young. Back in my day. But now, mercs don't worth a damn. Reputation, honor, it's just empty words to them. They only care about coin. Ooh, so now I have, I suspect that my number two here is actually a character specific option because I was a knight and that's the other thing that she mentions. These were the days mercenaries were decent and knights were noble. No need for sarcasm. I'm not talking about you. I bet they didn't even step inside the abbey. Had a quick glance. All clear. Time to claim the reward. Blunderers. Sounds like a murky business. Wouldn't say it better myself. Gwenel was hiding something, but only about the stone shards. The ambush wasn't his fault. He doesn't have any reason to send me to certain death. Without me, he will never find anything, and he understands it perfectly. If you have a specific artifact in mind, you either come to Varen or you can forget that it has ever existed. Period. A shadow passes over Varen's face. He goes silent, as if gathering his thought. Murky business. Murky indeed. Any questions? Oh, we can't do anything with the cat. We can talk to him. We can steal some more stuff from right in front of them. We can go upstairs. We can leave. The save system. Does oh, so we do get the save. Interesting. Save the game, you need to rent a room in a tavern and sleep for any amount of time. You can also save your game in cleared out camps. Exiting the game does not save your progress. Whoa. Okay. If you die while playing in standard mode, you can resume the game from your save. In permadeath mode, your saves are irreversibly erased on death. What mode are we in? I don't, I, we haven't set that, have we? Hmm. I'm seriously curious. Will he react? Did the mug that I take have any value? It did. Lol. Okay. <laughs> Brook. Happy to see you visiting us once more. What are you selling? Oh, lots of stuff. Holy cow. Okay. Can I sell him his own stuff? I can, but he'll give me less for it. Got sausages, water, alcohol, stew, pretzels. Okay. Wow. All sorts of shenanigans. It's pretty awesome. Smoked ham. 
Does not spoil over time. Ooh, most of the stuff, yeah, spoils in two days. Four days. Three days. Harder, not available in beta, dang it. Talk to him again. What else do we have? I have some questions. Well, hello there. Varen told me about you. Wait, he said welcome back before. Aim for another serving or need my help with anything. Holy crud, so many options. Okay, so I'm not gonna go through every option with every NPC. What's the tavern's name? The tavern's name is the Black Boar. Can't find a nicer place around here. That hovel in Manshire they call a tavern. Nothing but a ripoff. Had my grandfather keeping this place and before him my great-grandfather. You can guess the rest. And me and my wife have been keeping it for 15 years or so, no less. Why the black boar? Now that's a long story. Had a wild boar roaming around here a century ago. Kept the entire village in fear. A vicious beast. Folks spoke that it wasn't a boar at all. Thought it to be an evil spirit in hog skin. The then lord of the land was a bit of a coward. Almost stopped hunting because of it. He sat around for a week or two, but what's life without hunts? So he put a handsome bounty on the boar's head. Lots of folks hurried into the woods. Half of them returned empty-handed, and the other half got mauled by the beast. No match for my great-great-grandfather, of course. Was a skillful archer, to say the least. He went after the boar, put it down with a single arrow, hit it right in the eye. Dropped it where it stood. The lord himself granted him the title of a ranger for this heroic deed. Made him quite a catch for the lasses. And my great-great-great-grandfather, a smart fellow, married the miller's daughter and opened this tavern with her dowry. Got the boar's head hung above the fireplace. Uh, there's no boar's head there. Womp womp. Used to have many folks from the neighboring villages flock over just to catch a glance at the beast. Though a couple years ago, some scoundrel stole it. Oh, there we go. Looked for him everywhere, but that scum fell off the face of the earth. Ooh, I smell a quest. Oh, I guess not. I need to speak to the elder. Our elder, Odar, lives right in the middle of the village, in the village hall. You can't miss it. It's right in front of the market. If you need to earn some coin, go visit him. He's our master of contracts. Oh, God. Wait, what was that option? Just interesting. He says, what else are you interested in? Okay, that's good enough for now. Oda. Whoa. She looks way angrier in this picture than she did up here. How about a mug of foamy ale? Oh, she sells different things. A chunk of coal. Oh, we might as well run around and loot the inn, right? Well, I did say former night, right? Now that we picked somebody, I guess I should read this at least. Few noble houses of Aldor can boast history as impressive as of the house of Dur Yirn. By law, the title of knight can only be passed down to a man, so it's not hard to imagine the chagrin of Arna's father when after years of fruitless attempts, his long-awaited heir turned out to be a girl. To save his house, Arna's father decided to invoke an ancient custom of the northern foothills. Arna was to be raised as a boy. Her entire childhood and youth were dedicated to rigorous training and serving as a page to one of the noble families. When she reached adulthood, Arna was knighted. I thought that wasn't the thing, like literally up here. Oh, can only be passed down to a man. Okay, so slightly different. Over multiple tournaments, she managed to earn herself a reputation as a skilled warrior. Unfortunately, Arna never had a knack for the most important skill to an Aldoran noble. Scheming. Soon after her father's death, Arna lost her fife. Oh, yikes. Her title and her inheritance. The house of Der Vyrn ceased to exist. Shaken by these events... Arna gave an oath to redeem herself by a heroic deed and embarked on an endless journey into the lands of Aldor. So, that explains this. This curious holds sentimental value to Arna. It used to be the most treasured heirloom of House Irvirn, passed down through generations. But time was not kind to it. Yeah, it's pretty screwed up. Most of its stuff is like 40% reduced. And now we're up here robbing an inn. But, like I said, former night. Let's 
Let's go to town. The town drunk. Awesome. Start with that. His name's Ram. Why don't we go wet our throats to celebrate this meeting, eh? And I can just go, what are you selling? Awesome. He actually... <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Oh, wait. And he'll buy things? No way. Pay much, but... <laughs> Love it. Alright. We got a blacksmithy. Oh, wow. Okay, so there's actually quite a few people. What are you selling? All kinds of shenanigans. I'm poor, though. I'm 350 gold. It's not a special sword, right? Oh, it is a special sword. My sword. Well, so we just need to find the town center, huh? What are you staring at? Are there mushrooms growing on me or something? What are you selling? <laughs> just buy stuff from random people. Goat cheese. All right. Take a quick peek at what all people sell and buy. Food, mostly, so far. I guess I should be hitting number keys here. Pancakes? That's amazing. A bucket. Give it. I can just drink from the well? Okay. Cool. Well, I'm in town. Free thirst. Free thirst resolution, perhaps. Not. Ah. Oh my god. You do. What's your thing? Why are you running away from me? Come here. Oh, you feed the chickens? Well, I'm just gonna talk to you. What are you selling? food. Okay. So everyone, I mean, I guess it is medieval, right? Everyone's pretty much subsistence living. Next area over? No. Oh, this is the jail? Here to see Odar. He's upstairs. What are you selling? Nobody deals in anything but food. So what happens if I just go in here and jack this stuff? Like, I mean, nobody complained earlier. No way. Okay, I'm down. It's worth more than anything else I've stolen so far. Stupid mugs are only going to be worth three each. Could potentially be like a moral test of some kind, but I'm a knight who had everything stolen from me unfairly, so not super inclined to care too much about really anything that these people have to say. Uh, also, I can use that as a bandage. That's pretty important. Another? Oh man. Oh. Watch as they don't let me back in because I stole freaking everything. Well, let's talk to the mayor now that I've taken everything from you. Or magistrate or whatever your title is. Do you need any help? Tell me about your village. Anything interesting going on? What are you selling? What are you selling? Map. I have a map. The Southern March of Bryn. Yeah, that's what. They don't sell anything useful. Tell me about your village. What can I tell? It's a village like any other. We don't have much of note other than our mill. The best mill around. We used to have folks from the neighboring villages bringing wheat to grind. All in all, we get by and I'm grateful for it. But there are always things to do. These are restless time. It should be time. Put it mildly. Do you need any help? 
We've got some work for you. Here's some contracts. Captive emissary and captured merchant. Which one do you want to hear about? Let's go merchant, because merchant might give us discounts on things. Bad news. Not so long ago, our merchant, Bert, went to town for some goods, but was ambushed by brigands on his way there. Fortunately, he survived, but now they hold him ransom, and we just don't have that kind of money. I need someone to get into Outpost Jormus and make it loud and clear for everyone that we don't negotiate with outlaws. Free the merchant, kill their leader, and I will make sure you are properly compensated. Wait, so you can't pay the ransom, but you can pay me to deal with it? Good, that's settled then. Give me your map and I'll mark the right spot. Come within three days to claim your reward. Danger is high. I have three days? Oh god, it's timed. Uh, so I have two skill points, huh? really don't know enough about this game to want to spend my skill points yet. I'm actually a little salty that my ability points are already spent. Where are we? Are we in Osbrook? Oh, modes. There we go. Wait, no. Not what I thought it was. I thought that was going to be difficulty mode. Well, this is a problem. So we have two problems, actually. We have a map, and we don't know where we are on it. Also, I have a bunch of loot that I'd love to sell, but I haven't been able to find anybody that wants to buy anything that's not food. trade. I gave him a candlestick back. Pancakes! I need food, so that works out. I suppose there's nobody to buy anything until the merchant's saved. That's probably what we're learning here. Does it tell me where I go? Oh, I have no idea where I am. Like an apothecary shop? Maybe he'll buy stuff. Here. Come here. Oh my god, come here. No, nope, still just buys food. Enchantment scroll. Enchantment? Enchantment! I almost wonder if that's worth buying. Probably better to save for Intel later. There, what? Tell me here where I am? Oh. Oh, we've already looted your house. Oh, but not your, not those barrels. Don't worry, guard. I'm not doing anything. How the heck? I have some questions. Tell me about the village. Osbrook, there we go. Do I get tired? Or thirst? Okay, so we're in Osbrook. I don't know where that is. Alright. 
We need to go south one zone, west one zone, south one zone. Get to the outpost. And as far as I can tell, there doesn't appear to be a tiredness statistic. So we're going to drink from the well. Thirst is at zero. All right, let's go. Game seems very old school RPG. -y. So I suspect there will be some adventures on the road here. Especially being as I'm traveling at nighttime. But maybe not. I'm assuming that the road will lead me to the tower, but that may be wrong. I'm going to follow the road a little bit further. But if this doesn't get me to a tower... Here comes the loot. Rebel becomes hostile. Right. Oh, I guess we're doing this. Oh. Oh, God. Oh. Oops. Blocked with my shield. Did you shoot through the wall? Apparently. Dodge. Okay. Hit him for 22, hit me for 14, bow guy missed again, 22 and blocked, 22 and blocked, but then I got hit by the arrow, and that's one death, lock picks, which are not super valuable, but are more valuable than like that chunk of gold. Fumbled an attack on me. Wait, and I restored 17 health? What is second wind? What did I even do? Okay. I'm in pain. Item for 22. Hit me for 14. Item for 29. Uh, I think I'm hosed here. It took me too long to realize that he could shoot through the wall. left. I don't think I can do anything. I'm dead, right? I don't even own a splint. Yeah. I'm enjoying the game's approach to resource scarcity, and I'm looking forward to adventuring in the wilderness next time. We're planning to upload one to two videos per week, so please remember to subscribe to the channel for notifications. We'd love to hear your thoughts on social media and in the comments down below. Finally, we'd like to take a moment to thank you for watching and to recognize these wonderful people for their ongoing support.